Today we're going to be looking at the world's smallest fin client. I've got the iGel UD Pocket. Uh, they call it a fin client. I'm not quite sure if I completely agree. Um, it's a bootable USB stick that you can use to turn any PC, any x86 device into a fin client. They bill it as um, a, a unit, a fin client that is really good for people that want to bring your own device, that uh, may be contractors that are bringing their own computers into your environment, um, but you want to standardize on using your Citrix or Horizon platform to deliver virtual desktops to them. For me, why I find it really interesting is we do a lot of proof of concepts with our customers, and they're really keen to have a look at the underlying technology they're gonna be using, understand if it's gonna meet their requirement, but during that time, they're not really interested in investing large amounts of money in fin clients or completely repurposing their PCs to be a fin client. That can often lead to an amount of complication when they're trying to use a Windows desktop with the Horizon client on it and trying to understand where the issues reside, whether it's on the virtual desktop, where it's to do with the underlying Windows install that they're running the client on. So these small USB bootable um, thin clients will enable you to repurpose any PC quickly and easily into a fully managed iGel thin client. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna give it a bit of a test drive. Uh, I've got my normal work laptop here. We're gonna plug it in and we're gonna boot into it to, to see what we can do with it. So as you'd expect, it's just a standard USB uh, thumb drive. Just gonna plug it into the laptop boot the laptop up, and as this is the first time we've used it, we're just gonna go into the boot menu to be able to select a boot from USB rather than the underlying hard drive. Now, obviously, if this was part of a uh, longer proof of concept, you'd want to set the BIOS settings on uh, the laptops or PCs you're gonna be using to choose that USB device first. My recommendation would be is actually if um, the USB is inserted to boot from that, if it's not, then to skip on past the Windows operating system. What that will mean is if a user's using it, they've got some trouble, they need to go back to their Windows desktop, you, they can just pull out the USB thin client, put it somewhere safe and then boot into Windows. And that's one of the features that I really, really like because it's not mucking around with the underlying Windows operating system. During that proof of concept phase, it makes it really, really flexible for the users to be able to do what they need so it doesn't hamper their usage or what they need to do with their underlying PC. So what we're doing is we're just gonna boot into this thin client. It's not quite the first time I have configured a few settings on this thin client, but we're gonna have a look at some of the settings um, to show how it works. What I've been really, really impressed with over the time that I've used this, and I've been using this now for about a month, is that the drivers that are installed with it have been able to recognize every piece of hardware I've tried it in. Um, I'm using it on my Dell XPS 13 here at the moment, um, but I've also tried it on um, a Dell tablet computer, um, I think there's a Latitude device, and I've tried it on a few other devices, and whatever I've plugged it into, it's quickly and easily recognized um, the component so I can then get on and use it. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna skip over to show you the screen of the thin client so you can have a look at some of the settings. Now what we've done is we've enabled shadowing. Shadowing is via VNC. Um, we've done that to uh, enable us to record this video a little bit easier. Um, and there's uh, lots of uh, settings and controls that we're gonna go through in a moment to see how this works. What I've also done is just lowered the resolution. This is a 4K laptop um, and it isn't a very good um, viewing experience when you're watching back a video when the, the screen resolution is that high. So I've just knocked it down to HD resolution. So what we can see here is uh, it's booted into the iGel desktop. Um, I've also configured the wireless. If I just open that up, we can see that we've co uh, connected to the corporate wireless here. No problems whatsoever with connecting to the SSID, configuring the uh, multi-led security that we needed to to get onto the wireless. That's been really, really easy. Um, and no matter which network I've uh, had to connect to, I've been able to do that quite easily. Obviously, a wired connection might be a bit more simple, might be easier for you to configure for the users. Um, if we just come down to uh, the icon of the spanner, it will open up uh, the setup and we can control everything inside of here. Whether that's from going into the system, we can look at things like date time, updating it, remote access. Um, if we come down to remote access, we can see the shadow settings that we've enabled for this device. Obviously in production, I'd recommend um, use secure mode, make sure that you've got passwords for it. Um, with this, we just get a nice little notification, even without that, that someone is wanting to shadow our session, which has to be approved before the user can connect. Um, if we come up then, we've got settings for all of the uh, different accessories that you might be using, but most importantly, we've got the session configuration. 
Um, obviously, this would probably be used with Citrix or VMware Horizon or maybe Microsoft RDS the uh, majority of the time. However, when I'm speaking to customers about their choice on Thin Clients, I tell them to think about future use cases and also use cases in maybe a disaster scenario. Not everyone is lucky enough to have VDI uh, in production and in DR, so think about how the Thin Client may, may need to be used now and in the future. With lots of applications moving to software as a service, um, having a really robust web browser that's capable of HTML5 I think is really important. And that will allow you to potentially work in a slightly different way in a DR scenario, even if you didn't have the VDI uh, solution available. Um, obviously, you, you could then choose your different protocols to connect to in production. So what we're going to look at here is two specific use cases. One is VDI or remote app uh, connection, and the second is the browser. So um, we're going to go into VMware Horizon as our choice of uh, VMware uh, as VDI broker. And we can see we've got all the settings that we would be used to. Obviously, the idea is, is the contractor or member of staff is going to be keeping the UD pocket on them, plugging it into any device or the device they choose to use to get quick and easy access to those business resources. So we can very quickly and very easily configure all these settings. Obviously, they can be configured via the central server with the usual iGEL management components. And then we can configure the sessions. So what we've done here is we've configured a connection to a demo environment that we've got here at Computer World. Um, and we're just going to have a look at what that now does and what the experience is like for a user. We can obviously, uh, well, we can configure this to uh, be very seamless in the way that it connects. In terms of when it boots up, it could go straight into VMware Horizon. The user could then get asked for a username and password, and we then get full single sign-on into the virtual desktop. Alternatively, we can give them the more uh, look and feel of this uh, desktop I uh, icons. They simply go into Horizon. As you can see, I've stored the credentials to avoid me having to type them on screen here, um, but we've been fully connected through to the VMware Horizon environment. I've got a number of desktops and remote applications that I can see. And for example, if I just go to the Windows 10 desktop, that's going to connect me through now all the way to the Horizon environment, connect to the Horizon desktop that has been allocated to me, and I can now use any application as if I was on a corporate desktop. Um, so we can see we've got a number of applications installed here. We can run those. You all know how VDI works, otherwise you probably wouldn't be looking at a video about thin clients. So I'm not going to dwell on that any longer. One really important um, option for me was having a, a strong, robust browser. And built into the iGEL Thin Client is a Firefox uh, browser. And if we just come down here to the browser settings, um, we can then go and configure uh, how that works. Again, there's a lot of settings that allow you to really customize the experience, what the users can access, and the look and feel. Um, and then we can then go and configure browser sessions. So we can have multiple browser sessions configured on the desktop or down in the um, sort of application tray that we've got here, the application launcher, that could launch you or take you directly to um, different software as a service applications you're using, like Microsoft Office 365. Uh, I have tested it with Blast Extreme and Horizon with a HTML5, it works fantastic. Um, maybe using salesforce.com. So you've got a real flexibility there. And if I just come into the different settings here, you can see that I've set the home page. So when we go and double click that, it will just take me straight the way there uh, as a user. So if I just bring the browser up, we can see Firefox is loaded and we get taken straight to the Computer World website. I've actually been using this as my home computer for the last few weeks. Um, why? Because I've got some problems with the Windows installation on there, and it was actually quicker and easier for me just to boot from the USB Thin Client. It works fantastic for me connecting to a corporate desktop, no problem with that whatsoever. Um, and it also is a really strong, robust browser. I've been able to do everything that I uh, would require to. Um, I've been able to uh, go and order the weekly shop on there, and I've, I've, as I mentioned, been able to use Blast Extreme. So it seems to work. It ticks all the boxes for me. Um, there's obviously a lot more to this, there's a lot more settings, but for me it is the simplicity of what I've just shown you there that make it a really good option for proof of concepts, BYOD, and for contractor use cases. Um, so I really recommend you have a look at it. The price point to me um, is about right for a proof of concept or giving you that flexibility. It's licensed in such a way that the user can use it with any device. Obviously consider how you're configuring the network that the user is going to connect their own device to. You don't want to put them on the corporate LAN because 
the risk is that they could boot into Windows and then potentially cause some damage. So I'd recommend putting them on a guest network or a network that is isolated to only connect to the internet and through to your VDI solution. So hopefully you found this useful. This was the IGL UD Pocket ThinClient.